Welcome to the Amber Data Derivatives GUI demo. So basically what I'll be showing here is how to navigate our GUI application and some of the features that we have here on the app. Next sections we would like to check out are the option scanner and the Dball section. Option scanner is really going to be around flow. How are trades being executed? What kind of trades are going through both on screen and on block? So I'll kind of jump here and give you a really good idea. If I scroll down here, um, basically I can see sort of the top trades. I pick out a date. I can look at blocks. I can look at all blocks or filter by minimum trade size. So these are kind of everything all together in terms of top trades. This is going to be packaged by block trades. And then the next table below is going to be by on-screen trades. So here, let's just say I want to look at um, the past week of block trades. I'm looking at options that are not expired as of today, but I can do all options or active only. And so what I'm looking at here is I can see the, the most popular packages ordered by the greatest amount of contracts traded. So this trade, it looks like a diagonal where someone sold the October $29,000 call, bought the September $31,000 call, it traded this package for 1500 contracts. And our trades is that this was done in two separate trades, number of trades. On average, because I'm looking over the past, call it week, this trade was executed on average in the past day. And we can see the total premium traded. In this case, they sold a premium. So they got paid $800,000 for this. And then the average index price of the executions of this trade was $26,000. Um, same thing here. I can look at this other trade here. This looks like a, again, some sort of diagonal. And you can see this was actually done 42 trades. Um, so this is a lot more active. Now I can go ahead and click this and I can get a breakdown of all the individual trades close up. So instead of looking at the aggregate sort of trades, now I can look at the total uh, trade executions. I can scroll to the right-hand side, look at the block ID numbers, see what goes with what side. I can look at the changes in open interest, the order book state before and after that trade, so on and so forth. So a lot of good, useful details here. If I scroll down a little bit more here, this is more at a glance of volume, biggest changes in open interest, most traded options. So here, if I look at the most traded options, I can see the September $31,000 call over the past week was the most traded. I can see the biggest change in open interest was this October $29,000 call, which increased 1776 contracts. Uh, here, I can look at 24 hour volume by strikes. Here, I can see the net tallies of, of trades in the strike space, um, whether it's bought or sold, puts or calls. And then lastly here, I can see sort of a, we call this a gravity chart, but essentially it looks like a bunch of specs on chart is showing the actual trades. In this case, uh, the size is gonna reflect the total amount traded. The same type of chart here is gonna show the net EGA uh, per trade by block size or by image size on, on the screen. So this gives us a really good idea of sort of how the flow is looking and where things are getting done. Jumping onto the DVOL index side here, DVOL is really interesting. It's showing us um, essentially the Bitcoin VIX. So what we can do here is because we're looking at the Bitcoin VIX, we essentially have a normalized view of implied volatility, 30 days till expiration across the strike space, gives us a really good idea of how things are priced in the implied space. So what we've done here is we've taken implied on the Y axis and index price on the uh, x-axis and shows us a really good image of a scatter plot of spot vol correlation. So we can see if spot vol is positively correlated or negatively correlated. So as of recent, it looks like it's negatively correlated. And then here we can do the same thing, but this is going to be, um, instead of looking at devol on the y-axis, we're looking at the risk reversal. And so we can see in this section, uh, 20 days ago, we we're more of a positive slope. Uh, and now here it's a little bit more mixed. Here I can see the relationship between ETH DVOL divided by Bitcoin DVOL. So this is an, a ratio chart. So if I go back to say August, 2021, look at a couple of years of data, what we can see here is we'll see, you know, what is the trend of ETH vol versus Bitcoin vol. And so a reading of 1.0 is a perfectly equal vol implied vol pricing between the two assets. And so now we can see that Bitcoin has gotten more expensive as of recent. Here we can just see a, a snapshot of the DVOL index over time. 
Here we can look at DVOL with spot prices as a line chart. And then here we look at DVOL with um, calculating realized vol of DVOL, so vol of vol. Um, this gives us a really good idea of how quickly uh, vol regimes can change. So we can see as of recent, this kind of surprise move uh, changed the vol space pretty quickly. And then lastly, this is one of the best charts. What we're looking at here is we're looking at DVOL versus 30-day realized vol. Implied vol is really the best estimate of the next 30 days of realized vol. So we shift back the implied vol to line it up with the realized vol. And now we can get a good idea of the realized variance risk premium. So we can see here in the histogram at the bottom, are options overpriced? If it's a positive histogram, then yes, they are. Are they underpriced? When it's a negative histogram, uh, options are underpriced. And it gives us a really good idea of, of sort of those trends over time. Now, jumping into the futures and perpetual side of things, um, if I go here to perps and futes or Delta One products and I double click global, what we'll see here is essentially a, a bunch of different stats around funding and futures basis for our supported exchanges. So we support Binance, Bybit, BitMEX, Darebit, QOB, Kraken, and OKEX. So here I'm looking at Bitcoin. I can see essentially a time series of funding. Uh, throughout time, I can change the date range and see how that funding has changed. This other chart here is really interesting. So this is going to be cumulative funding. So I can look at the realized funding discretionary at each point, or I can change it to realized, uh, accumulated realized. So I can see given this date range, how much funding have I paid out over time on these various exchanges? So you can kind of hover here and really see what that looks like. Uh, on the right-hand side here, I can actually compare two exchanges side by side and or two instruments. So I have this list of instruments. So let's just say I want to look at Deribit funding for Bitcoin. You can go down here to the Bitcoin Perpetual. And then I want to compare that to Deribit funding for the ETH Perpetual. So let me just go over here and find it here. Perfect. So in this case, I'm looking at the coin settled version for both. And now I can go to the accumulated funding over time and really see if there's a differential between the two. So you can get a really good idea of what that looks like. I can expand the state range. Let's just say I want to look over the past year and understand, you know, if I was just long the perpetual, how much funding am I paying? And is there a difference between the two assets? And now you can really see that. So that's something that's really, really interesting. Um, we can see here in Ethereum space, uh, after the, the merge, there was a little bit of a decline in funding. So that, that type of stuff is really interesting. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit more here, I can see the funding uh, over time. So I can see the min and the max and then the average over time. And I can pick out uh, different intervals. So right now I'm looking at the past one day, but if I want to look at the past week, I could do that. And so now I can see it broken out by all the various exchanges and instruments. And this gives me a really good idea of the two side by side. Uh, here I can look at volume over time by the different ex exchanges, open interest uh, over time by the different exchanges. Here I can look at the uh, APR of basis for all the futures by the different exchanges. I'm looking at in APR terms, or I can look at it in price terms. Now getting a really good idea of the structure of the basis over time. Uh, this chart will show us the basis, the calculated basis over time of the various uh, futures. In this case, I'm looking at 90-day futures. So we basically do an interpolation there to calculate the 90-day future, and we can see how that basis moves over time. Kraken is a little bit less liquid, so it's more volatile, but you can essentially get a really good idea of what that looks like. Finance is the most sort of stable, most liquid, so you'll get sort of the best picture there. If I scroll down a little bit more here, I can see the liquidations by day. So obviously in the future, this will be less relevant, but on August 17th, 2023, we had a huge sell-off in Bitcoin, so a lot of liquidations occurred. Um, and so we can see here total liquidations broken out by exchange. And then here we can see the intraday liquidations as well. So I can pick out specific exchange. Right now I'm looking at Darebit. Now we can see on the 17th and the 18th, these times are in UTC. You know, what kind of liquidations did we get? 